Welcome back to the Business Immigration Benchmark. I'm your host, Laura Blanares. Today, we're going to take a deeper dive into a topic I covered a few weeks ago, which was you know, onboarding foreign national employees. We're going to take a deeper dive into specifically the onboarding timelines for sponsoring foreign national employees, specifically how to communicate to HR recruiters in determining the start dates and offer letters. I've seen things go sideways. There's a few common challenges that come up with unrealistic start dates or issues popping up that delay the start dates. And we're going to talk about how to prevent some of these mistakes or miscommunications in this episode. With that, I want to also put a call to action for listeners. I love getting questions and feedback on the Business Immigration Benchmark. So if you have any of the above, best way to get a hold of me these days is to shoot me a DM on LinkedIn. Would love to hear from you. Please keep reaching out. Please continue with the feedback. With that, we'll dive right in. Okay, so common challenges with onboarding timing for visa transfers. And when I'm talking about these common challenges, I'm talking about also the common visa transfer of the H-1B worker, so an H-1B transfer. And I think the two most common challenges we see, I've seen them in the last month with some of my clients, so they come up frequently. The first is when you have a recruiter or a hiring manager set an unrealistic start date in an offer letter that has no basis in the company visa transfer process or any kind of realistic timing for transferring an H-1B. So that's the first category. We'll dive into it a little deeper in just a moment here. The second most common issue we have when we're talking about challenges with onboarding visa transfers is when the recruiter or a hiring manager does set a reasonable start date based on the company H-1B transfer process protocol. But because of some underlying unique situation with the foreign national candidate, the start date is going to need to be bumped back because of an RFE issue or a common trend we're seeing these days that falls into this category is when the H-1B worker has exceeded their 60-day grace period and needs to find another way like a consular notification, H-1B transfer that requires some sort of travel, perhaps even visa stamping, before eligible to start their work with the company. So pushing that normal H-1B transfer timeline way out and exceeding what the initial start date would be. So to dive deeper into that first common scenario where there's just an unrealistic start date set by the hiring manager or recruiter, Often what's happening here is the recruiter or hiring manager just isn't aware of the visa process or because of a communication or conversation with the H&B worker, you know, they set a two-week start date. While, you know, the H&B visa is unique, as we may know, that an H&B worker can start when an H&B petition is filed and that an H&B petition can be filed in two weeks, almost no H&B worker these days wants to start at the new company without the approval in hand, or at least a premium processing notice of approval. Because folks these days are risk averse. They want to make sure they are maintaining their H-1B status, protecting their status. So they're going to wait until the H-1B petition has been approved. Some companies these days will allow for H-1B transfers based on the filing. But like I said, most of the time, the H-1B worker doesn't want to start until approval. And so what that means is You'll have to work with your immigration counsel to get a confirmed estimate of when your immigration counsel can file that H-1B petition reliably. So if you've got a batch LCA program, you can likely file your H-1B within a week. If you don't have an H-1B batch program or using batch LCAs rather, you can't file within a week because it takes a week to get the LCA. So uh Ideally, you're having your immigration counsel commit to filing that H-1B transfer inside of a two-week period and then setting up, you know, when based on the new premium processing timeline, which is now 15 working days and roughly, you know, three weeks after filing to get an H-1B approval adjudicated from USCIS. 
So you're looking at, you know, the fastest for an individual LCA filed H-1B transfer. The fastest to secure an approval is five weeks. So setting that sort of timeline up with your immigration counsel and agreeing that, you know, based on your partnership that, you know, five weeks is when you can reliably commit to start dates. So five weeks from the date the offer has been accepted to kick out that start date for a common no issues H-1B transfer. And that that's a reasonable date to then use for your recruiters and hiring managers to set expectations. The second scenario that I talked about is where the recruiter, the hiring manager sets the transfer or start date to be that five weeks. So they're aware of the process. They followed all the training. They set that start date and the offer letter to be five weeks from the date the offer's been accepted. But for whatever reason, this H-1B transfer is going to take more time. And that can bumble the communication and frustrate the H-1B manager, can frustrate the H-1B worker, and of course, the company's internal resources for onboarding, whether that's training, you know, getting payroll started, all those things. These scenarios are becoming more common because we're seeing a lot more H-1B transfers for H-1B workers that are outside of their 60-day grace period. So they technically don't hold the H-1B status anymore. Of the cases I've seen, one recently, the H-1B worker filed an H-4 change of status application, which is a great move. The H-1B worker went and filed to change to a dependent status. And technically, when we pick up the file for filing the H-1B transfer for our client, that candidate now is in a pending H-4 status and they have the choice to wait until the H-4 has been adjudicated before the H-1B can become effectuated through the change of status route. Or the H-1B worker can decide to travel to effectuate the H-1B and take the timing in their own hands. And that's what this H-1B worker decided to do. But the complicating factor is this H-1B worker did not have a visa stamp in their passport. So they chose to travel back to India and visa stamp through a U.S. consulate in India. So where we started with that offer letter saying five weeks, we then had to add about a month and a half to secure the H-1B visa stamp through the U.S. consulate abroad. And communicating that to the manager and the onboarding team at the client was a challenge in that there wasn't a protocol or mechanism in which the company and the stakeholders were familiar with why a start date would be pushed back and accommodating that. So it was a little bit messy and now have since created, you know, the protocol of if we're in these types of scenarios, when our global mobility immigration consultant then notifies the stakeholders and recalibrates that start date. So that's all to say these are pretty common scenarios. I'm sure Many of you listeners have experienced one or both and can commiserate with how challenging that can be. And so the purpose of this episode, of course, is to dive deeper into the onboarding topic that I covered a couple of weeks ago and offer you the solution of building you know, a communication framework for these types of scenarios because they're going to come up. You're going to have new recruiters who are less familiar with the visa process or don't appreciate the timing of the visa process and fall into that scenario one, setting unrealistic start dates, or scenario two, where things just come up in the course of the H-1B candidate's file or the foreign national candidate's file that requires some additional special handling and will ultimately delay the start date. So you'll want to have some sort of framework in which these stakeholders can rely on and operate and that you as the global mobility immigration team are managing proactively. So the first principles are, you know, managing expectations with hiring managers. So as I said, you want to make sure you have a clear indication of visa transfer timelines with your immigration counsel that you are consistently representing to hiring managers and recruiting. So in the example of an H-1B transfer, you want to make sure your immigration counsel and your team are on the same page with what to communicate. Generally speaking, that's going to come somewhere between the five to six week range to secure an approval notice. And you'll want to make sure that your company is also consistently requiring the H-1B approval notice if that's part of your protocol 
Or if your company is open to having folks transfer with just the filing, making sure that's clear in the communications to the foreign national H-1B worker, as well as to the recruiter. There are some scenarios where the H-1B worker may want to transfer on just the filing. And so you want to make sure your company is comfortable with that or not and how you're communicating it. So that's the managing expectations with the manager to sort of say, that's great. We're going to put in the initiation for this transfer. It's going to take five to six weeks. Here's the start date. We'll notify you if anything comes up. I also think, and we've talked about this before, it's something I'll keep saying is that the education process for this compliance is really important. Now, you can't always control whether your managers or your stakeholders are going to be engaging in the training, but it is best to be doing this at least once a year with, you know, what are the common pathways to sponsor a foreign national? What involvement does the hiring manager have in this process? What should they be aware of? And doing that on a yearly basis because things change. Like this year, we've seen an update to the premium processing timeline. So you'll want to update managers to reset their expectations where before premium processing, we could secure an approval notice in two weeks. We're now looking more at three weeks because the government is now using the premium processing clock on working days. So things like that are important to recalibrate expectations for managers, and that's a key part with education. Like I said, you can't control if everybody's going to be engaging in the education, but putting it on some sort of intranet site, some sort of, you know, immigration company page so that there is some self-serve aspect, putting up that recording, putting common FAQs is going to be a great idea so that if the manager has questions, they know exactly where to go. And they can always obviously reach out to you. But some people like to have that, you know, self-serve aspect to the information. And then, you know, the third principle is leaning on your counsel to provide these resources, update these resources to not only train you, but also to help you train and provide the resources to your stakeholders. So one thing that we're going to leave you with in this episode is a template framework, a template chart that you can use to educate your company stakeholders with what timelines for the visa processes, the commonly sponsored visa processes your company does. And this would be something you'd put on your internal immigration team page for managers to refer to so that when they are discussing start dates in their offer letters, when recruiters are putting in start dates, they can refer to this chart to say, okay, we've got an H&B transfer And that's going to be five weeks. I'm going to set my start date for this for a national candidate five weeks out because that's in line with our company protocol. So this is something hopefully you can work with your immigration counsel to help you set those, you know, timelines so that you can inform efficiently and correctly, transparently rather, your recruiters, hiring managers who are hiring for national candidates You can give them a quick reference of when they can be setting those start dates and offer letters. So some final thoughts on the onboarding process. I think this is just a small, you know, tutorial rather on creating some transparency in the visa onboarding timeline, kind of a deeper dive on how to create a smooth onboarding process for your foreign national candidates that you're managing. This is something that comes up pretty regularly as a challenge for all immigration programs. So hopefully this chart and talking through some of these common challenges are helpful to you. As always, if you have a suggestion or an issue you're wrestling with in your immigration program, send me a note on LinkedIn. I'd love to chat further, have you on the program to chat through your questions or thoughts. Thanks for tuning in to the Business Immigration Benchmark this week. Catch you next time. 